Some say, life is only a dream. And that the meaning of life is to live that dream. From my perspective, being able to see this machine today may be the right answer. It started as a dream. And it still is today. But with a big difference. Because now I can ride it. I can hear it. I can feel it. And at the end of the day, I can sit back on a chair, relax, and enjoy the lines of my dream. Or should I say, of my life. Welcome to Racer TV. Behold, this is the Honda CX Cafe Racer that Honda should wish to build. Each individual choice has an undercover purpose. One of those purposes is to hide the real age of this motorcycle. Parked on the street, no one is able to say if this is a modern or an old classic machine. And this is usually the right path to get something timeless. Is this something easy to achieve? No. It is extremely difficult. It took me almost two years to get to these lines. But it was worth it. This has to be one of the finest Honda CX projects I've ever laid my eyes on. And yes, I shouldn't say it because I designed it. As in all other videos, I am only being truly honest. But I think you will agree with me. Mainly because until now, everyone loved this motorcycle. Especially me. Because I am addicted to this intoxicating engine sound. I said. The sound of this machine is really intoxicating. And this leads us to the pea shooter exhausts. Why did I choose them? Because they are different. The sound of the pea shooters changes according to the rotation of the accelerator. And when we cut off the accelerator, a beautiful resonation will occur.
most of the times, it sounds like a V8 engine. What more could we want? Before you ask about the rear cowl, here is what happened. As I said on episode 3, this project was designed to be a two-seater. But it would also have a back cover, which would change the look to a monoplace seat. Unfortunately, we did not have the time to finish the rear cowl, which means that this piece will probably be finished during the winter. I said probably, because most people said that this seat is great as it is now. And for that matter, I'm still thinking about it. In what concerns to the final aesthetic of the project, I must say that nothing of this would exist without my amazing mechanic. For those who missed the episode 4, here is the magician who made my dream come true. Lionel Ribeiro. Owner of Oficina das Motors. Located in Portugal. Every time I discovered some of Lionel's technical skills, I had to change the project. This is also one of the reasons, why the building process lasted almost 10 months. Each single detail or decision, required hours of labor. Just to give you some examples, it took us 4 hours to find the final position of the front light. To decide the right tires. Almost 3 hours on the internet. In conclusion, a project like this, is a real time consumer. But it is so rewarding, when we see that our efforts, made all the difference. One of my concerns about changing the original CX fuel tank, was the possible presence of irregular surfaces on these steel sheet unions. But considering that Lionel only works with the best professionals, I was blown away when I saw the final paint job. All the surfaces, are impeccably smooth, and without any trace of the changes in the fuel tank. Thank you Mr. Juaking, for your great paint job. And also to Ricardo, who made my seat look like it came out from the factory. So, what were my guidelines on this project? When I started the first drawings on Photoshop, I wanted to create something that would look nice right next to one of the most beautiful cars ever made. the E-Type Jaguar from the 60s. Unfortunately, I could not get the Jaguar to this photo shoot. But I got an equally timeless scenario. An amazing house, almost 500 years old. I don't know about you, but I think this combination, looks pretty damn good. Another important thing on this project, is the blend of classic, and modern lines. I selected the best features of these two styles. The chrome and polished finishes, placed as if it was an old motorcycle from the 60s. And the big brakes. Strong suspensions. Wide tires. Mini turn signals and a very vanguardist front LED light. If you look carefully, this classic and modern mixture is perfectly balanced. Nothing seems forced. And if you think this seat color should have something to match, maybe you should look again. The heat of the new custom exhaust manifolds did the job for me. Sublime. But it worked brilliantly. 
Another small detail that you probably didn't notice is the lack of the front brake master cylinder. To achieve this classic and clean aspect over the clip-ons, Lionel hid it under the fuel tank. The master brake cylinder is cable activated. Simple, but it works perfectly. I know that there are many other things you want to know about this project. And I am going to explain everything to you. But not today. From time to time, I am going to bring some new videos, in which I will clarify everything I learned during this build. After so many comments about the first episode, I decided to baptize this machine as Frankenstein. I know that this is only the name of the character who created the monster, and not the monster himself. But here is an interesting fact. Joining my first name, with the name of this Honda. We get, Victor Frankenstein. And this is precisely the full name of the character, who created the monster known, as Frankenstein's monster. By the way. If you saw this video using the sound speakers of a smartphone, please get some good headphones, or a good sound system. And why didn't I suggest it earlier? Because now you will have to watch it again. But this time, I am sure you will love it much more. Thank you for watching Racer TV. And as always, I hope to see you next week.